Today's video, we're going to be talking five wide from the New York Jets playbook, why you should use it, what are the routes that are really powerful, and how you can actually turn this into a really solid offense um, to utilize. What's up, guys? My name is Cody, and I want to thank you for taking the time to watch today's video. Now, if you're new to the channel, maybe you've never seen a video that I've done. My channel is all about Madden 21 tips and tricks on the offensive side of the ball and on the defensive side of the ball. We post four videos a day, one at 2 o'clock, one at 4 o'clock, one at 6 o'clock, and one at 8 o'clock p.m. Eastern time. So if you're looking to get better at this game, I would highly encourage you to go ahead and click the subscribe button at the bottom right-hand corner of your screen. All right, guys, so I love to pass the ball. Some of you might have already purchased some of my ebooks, my Arizona offense and my New England offense. Both of them are precedented uh, are predicated on throwing the ball a lot and being effective as a passer in Madden 21. Today's video is no different, and I've actually been really interested all season long in how can you actually make five wide an attack. I love five wide. I love spreading the field. I love everything that that could entail, and I love just basically carving the defense up. Well, we're going to show you this play out of the New York Jets book, and one of the routes that I've been talking a lot about, and you'll notice that the um, New York Jets have a lot of really good formations. You see here it has the empty tray stack, and it has the two best plays, in my opinion, from the empty tray stack, which are the post wheel and the curl switch. I love those post routes. You have a QB draw, and you have Y stick. So it doesn't have all of the bells and whistles, but it has a really good op option uh, for you. You also have empty Y slot, as you can see here another five wide formation within the Jets book. This is kind of more of a traditional five wide receiver trio, uh, something like that. And then what I want to show you is you have this empty tray. Now the empty tray um, has a very specific, specific play that I really, really like to use. Okay. So what it's called is there's actually two plays and we're going to go over one of them today. It's also in the stock audibles. It is the play um, unders, uh, as you can see here. Now this looks probably very familiar to you. It's very similar to the double post out of the gun bunch. You see it has that nice route to the tight end that kind of goes out and then it cuts uh, to the inside. Now with your packages here, you can do all kinds of things. For example, you can put your halfback in the slot. You could put a wide receiver flip package. You could go strong slots. You can do all kinds of things. Um, but as you can see here, you know, you can do all kinds of things with your packages. Um, with different audibles and things like that, you can actually get wide receivers in that position as well. Um, but what I just want to show you is I just want to show you the route. So what we're going to do here um, for the Bucks is we're going to submit OJ Howard where Rob Gronkowski would be. And then on our running back position, um, we're just going to go with, uh, let's see if we can find a package here. The wide receiver flip package, as you see, this will make it a full on five wide receiver set. Uh, from this or four wide receiver and one uh, running back but as you can see here you know now we have uh, some other players as well in the mix now again the play we're going to be going over is unders now on the defensive side of the ball we're not going to mess with zone drops or anything the one thing we will do is we're going to go ahead and turn auto flip on man align and kind of put everybody in a decent alignment type of position and then we're going to show you this against every single coverage in madden 21 and what I love about this, this is just a simple base play. It's a, it's a yard gainer from five wide. It's something that you can go to that's going to consistently get you yardage um, against the defense. So I'm going to back the ball up here just a little bit. And as a general rule, you'd want to run those three wide receivers to the wide side of the field. So we're going to actually put the ball on the left hash here. But it can be ran on both hashes. It's not necessarily that critical to have it one way or the other. And what you'll notice here on these is you have these under routes. These You have two of them, actually, um, which I think are, is really, really good. And then on the back side, you have a five or about a nine yard out route. And then you have the stock fade to Scotty Miller. Now, what you'll notice at the stock fade is if they press you in man coverage, that fade is going to get an instant win animation. Pretty much every single time, regardless of talent, especially if you have over 90 deep route running, you're going to get a nice little win. You also have that out route against man to man coverage. If you have a slot of Matic, that's going to work very effectively as well. And you can certainly change this up. You don't have to run this on the back side. You could do something like this, right? You could turn it into curl flat. That's typically what I would like to do. Uh, I'll typically put this guy on a, a whip route, and then I'm going to motion him in. What you'll notice when you motion him in, if I'm man align, you see it's going to change the entire landscape of the defense. Once you motion in, he's going to become unpressable, and as you can see, he's going to absolutely torch man-to-man -to -man coverage. In my opinion, when you run five wide, it is really, really important that you have an answer for four man-to-man uh, -man coverage. It's one of my most... Uh, biggest things that I need and so uh, having this little motion right here is critical I'm telling you right now this whip route when you motion him in he is going to absolutely torch every corner in the game whether it be man or uh, man press or man off that is a simple little solution 
that you can use to move the ball well against man-to-man -man coverage. You can also, what's really nice is when you bring him in, in motion here, you can put him on a delay fade, and then you can actually release him out as well. Now I want to talk about these under routes, and I want to talk about how they work and why I think they are so effective in Madden. The reason I like these under routes, and one more quick thing about motion, I want to show you just the motions here. You see I can motion Evans all the way across, and now he's going to be kind of in this little position right here. Uh, and as you can see here, if he's on an out, it's not going to be as good. As a general rule in Madden 21, um, in-breaking routes are what work best. So what you'll see on this on this right side here is when I go to run this, watch Mike Evans. You're going to see he's going to get inside leverage, and he's going to just work up the field um, as a nice little five-yard in route. Now, what I like about this play is you get two of them. You get two of them in the same play, so you can run the same route to Watson. And what you'll see here, he's going to get that inside release, cut in, and he's going to get that nice uh, inside position. Now, if you have a better route running receiver, for example, if you have Lance Allworth or Chad Johnson, really anyone over 90 short route running, he's actually going to get a little bit better of a cut against man-to-man -man coverage, get a little bit more separation. But as you can see, um, he's doing really pretty solid against Jair Alexander. And of course, if he's in, you know, in movement or motion, this will work. If he's off coverage, so let's say that they shade coverage over top and kind of play, you know, that that game, you can lowball this. You can lowball this to um, to that receiver, and this will help you as well in man-to-man -man coverage. So you'll see here again, Jai Zion, He is activated, so he might jump this. Um, but as a general rule, one of those two in routes will work. As you'll see here, the route to Mike Evans is getting wide open as well. Um, but you can take one of those two. Now, the next route is this route to the tight end. Um, and as you see, it's like that little uh, angled double post kind of thing. Uh, when he cuts to the inside, if you just basically low ball it, um, you should get pretty decent separation. Um, occasionally, you really want um, high route running there as well. So if you have like a Chris Cooley, this thing's going to be really, really good. Um, with OJ Howard, you can throw it even though the window looks covered. You can actually throw this. If they click onto it, it's not going to help them. Um, but this will beat man-to-man. -man. Just pass it into the inside, and you'll be pretty successful with that. The other thing I will say uh, really quickly about that route is let's say that – you know, let's say that you get something like this, right? This will happen from five wide. And let's just say he's on the outside. If he has outside leverage, right, this could happen um, just with, with the way people will play it. And, of course, I bump, I accidentally bumped the tight out button. But what you'll notice about this, and, again, in my opinion, if you have a good route running tight in there, it's going to help this even more. So this is good in regs. It becomes really good in mutt because you get all of the high route running. Um, and that's that's really, really helpful. But a lot of people's base strategy out of man coverage is they're going to shade coverage outside. They always want to shade coverage outside to prevent getting beat over the top. And so with that shade coverage outside, what it's going to do is now it's going to open up that inside leverage and you're going to be able to hit that tight end consistently. Um, so you have that route. You have multiple routes here that are going to beat man. Um, obviously, uh, the play is more for zone coverage. Uh, I will say that. It's it's a base play, right? It It can do a little bit of everything. But what you'll also notice is if you get man, probably the most dominant route is that little whip route to Chris Goblin. Um, I think that's just absolutely going to torch man-to-man -man coverage in this game. So you have a couple of different options uh, within this. Uh, real quick, let me show you Scotty Miller's motion. You'll see here when I motion him, he's going to kind of come into this little compression area. So that's just something to be aware of as well. Now I want to talk about this play um, as it pertains to zone coverage. But before I do, I want to highlight my text message membership. If you have never joined my text message membership yet, it's very simple to do. Literally, all you have to do is text me. My number is 812-216-3644. Now, some people have asked, well, what's in it for me? Why would I do that? The reason that you would want to do that is because every single week, if you like these videos, I release really in-depth, long-form deep and very detailed uh, video breakdowns that are basically like mini ebooks. They're mini guides and they're on different formations. So for example, I have a guide on the gun bunch. I have a guide out on the big nickel over G. I have a guide out on the, um, this, this week was the why off trips pats from my new England book. I have one on the a slot offset, the split close, the single back trio from Minnesota. So I have ebooks or they're, they're, they're like mini ebooks. They're all video form. But a lot of people have said that these videos are better than a lot of the ebooks that they purchased. And so if you have not already joined it, it's completely free to join. Literally, all you got to do is pull out your cell phone and shoot me a text message. And I'll shoot you a link to the playlist that is private on YouTube. But I'll shoot you that link and that will get you access to all of the video material. 
So uh, be sure to shoot me a text. Don't let another day go by without doing that. But anyways, I want to come back to this and I want to talk about this play as it pertains to zone coverage. So with zone coverage, there's a lot of things that can happen. I really want to primarily focus on the right side here, but this right side is borderline unstoppable against zone coverage. What you'll notice is that little, your first read is quick to Mike Evans. If you can hit this route quick to Mike Evans, take it. Take it every single day of the week. This route to Mike Evans, you will find that you will get this open a lot. This little quick read right here, snap, throw it out there, get him the ball. If they're playing hard flats, they're not going to guard. They're, they're not going to guard him. If they're playing like cover two, then what you would want to do. So let me show you cover two real quick. If they're playing cover two, they'll guard him at a, at the instant right here, right at the break. Then you're just going to get that out to Watson. So against cover two, you're going to look to your second in route typically. Against cover three and cover four, you should be able to hit your primary in route um, to Mike Evans. So that's like the little one-two read, um, essentially. But what you'll see here, see how they sit on him right there? They get that immediate bump, and then you can hit that route on the right side. Those little in routes are really, really effective for just being simple yard gainers, right? There's nothing too crazy to them whatsoever, but what's powerful about them is how good of a job they'll do at working the ball up the field against that. That's against an acrobat corner, a 90 zone corner, a really, really solid uh, player. Now, once the defense starts to come up a lot and they're playing that underneath coverage, what you'll be able to do, as you can see here, and really the only way they're going to be able to truly stop this is if they put their yellow zones at five yards, right? So they're going to be playing heavy underneath. Well, if they do something like that, and I'll show you that really quickly here, um, once they start to do stuff like that where they drop these hooks at like zero or five yards uh, from a zone coverage perspective, then what that's going to do is it's going to open up the tight end, uh, tight end route. So, again, I'm going to go to that empty tray, and we're going to go to unders. If we can find the play here. There it is. And what you'll see, this is cover two, but all of the yellows are shaded down. I just want you to watch this right side. Out of a cover two shell, and what you'll notice, I can still hit that. You see how the yellows will kind of come to the middle of the field? So I can still work my backside. I can, I can still work my, my, um, my second in round as it comes across. You'll see right here, just work right in that little window. And Jair Alexander ended up making a great play. If they don't have abilities on their corners, those, the, the corners won't touch this. Um, if they do have an ability, you just need to wait just a split second longer right there. And as you see, that corner is not going to react, right? He's not, he's not going to do anything on that, on that side. The other thing that this is going to open up though, and this is why you're going to read from high to short here is if they stay down like that, look at how much room is wide open for this tight end. That tight end is wide open against zone coverage and he's ran straight at the middle. Now, let's say that they may go to something like that, but what they do is they take their middle linebacker and they pull him into the deep, right? They're going to take him and they're going to pull him right into the deep zone. Well, you can still hit these little ends route, these little in routes. They're, they become wide open. Without that third guy, um, they're truly going to be wide open. So let me show you another adjustment that they might make. They might take their slot, or I'm sorry, their nose tackle, and they might drop him into a, into a, a spy. Well, at that point, your second in route is going to come wide open as it crosses over the middle of the field because everything's going to kind of continue to pull with that first in route that they have on their field. Okay. So there's a lot of opportunity here. Now let's say they go all out middle coverage, right? They're going to take everything away from you in the middle of the field. They're sitting, they're putting five people uh, in the middle of the field right here. Right. And what you'll see is you see how that second in route is going to sit down and then you can basically playmaker that up if you want to, to get it open. So those are some options. And that's part of why I love these in routes. Now, what about the left side of the field? On the left side of the field, basically what I'll do is I'll put this whip route here and I'm going to motion him in. And then I can do one of two things. I could leave this fade to Scotty Miller if I think I can get that against cover two uh, or press man. Or I can put him on a curl route. Now, if it's cover two, um, you'll see that that fade route's not going to get touched and you can get that over the, over the outside shoulder of the DB. And that's going to kill cover two defense, right? So if they're playing a lot of cover two, especially if they... And again, understand that there's two different types of cover twos. They're cover, there's, well, there's three technically, but there's cover two cloud. So they have cloud flats on the outside or there's cover two hard flats. If they play cloud flats on this right side guy, he's not going to have any chance at stopping that route to circle. He's not going to be in the conversation to stop him. The only way that that corner on the outside is even in the conversation to be able to stop the in route is if they hard flat. The problem is, that they have now hard flatted on the left side as well. And what I'll show you here is that's going to give instant separation for this uh, this outside guy to be able to run free 
right up the deal. And that's on the short side of the field, right? Obviously, on the wide side of the field, it'll be even better. Okay, so that's cover two. Now, against cover two uh, cloud flat, you'll notice that Scotty Miller is still able to get over the top. So if they run any kind of cover two on the left side of the field, they're pretty much going to be screwed. Um, this route to Scotty Miller will just absolutely torch him. She's here, just outside pass lead. Uh, right there, I threw it probably a little bit too late, but that route will, will be just fine. Now, what about uh, cover two with like a soft squat? Let's say they run soft squat. Well, the whip route um, is going to serve as kind of a flat route as well for you. Uh, and what you'll notice is you see how the corner runs with him and then he comes back down. See that right there? What that shows or what that's going to mean, and it's, it's having to do with the spacing. It's having to do with the way that the, the routes work together. If you know it's cover two sync, then you could put Chris Godwin on an, a simple little flat route. But what I would recommend is, you know, let's say you guess wrong and they happen to be in a soft squad on that left side. What you'll see happen here is this little uh, little uh, zig is going to come wide, uh, wide open on the left side. So you have that opportunity. Now, again, if you know it's zone coverage, and I just want to show you this, if you put him on a flat zone, if you put Goblin on a flat, because you know it's zone, right? If it's man covered, I would definitely put him on a whip. But you know it's zone, so you'll see he's going to come back down on it, and you can kind of get that ball at Scotty Miller. You might need to be on the wide side of the field for that. But um, but typically, and that's cover two soft squat, okay? It's not, and again, you can still work your backside. I, you know, I don't want you to ever stop working uh, the backside here, but what you'll notice here is that flat's going to kind of pull him right down at that time. It's a tight window, but you can get that to Scotty Miller. And then lastly, what I want to do is I just want to go over cover three really quickly. Um, cover three is not going to be very sound against this, primarily because we're going to basically run a curl flat read uh, over here on this left side. So we've got a curl and a zig route. And what you'll notice here is this zig route is going to, you know, do a really good job of getting separation. Now, again, if you think they're in zone coverage, I'd actually recommend running Godwin on a flat, which is something really simple, you know, nothing crazy. Um, but this is just a, basically a curl flat concept here on the left. And if they sit on the curl, then you just take your flat route and get upfield. So if they're playing cloud, or curl flats, with, if, if they're playing zone drops, zone drops won't stop it. Zone drops is going to give this up. But if they're not playing zone drops, obviously, you know, that curl to flat zone will be able to come back on it. But if they're, you know, if they're playing any other zone on the left side, that flat route's going to pull everything away. So you see here that on the left side, I can easily hit the curl every single day of the week. Now, if they're playing cloud flats, you'll see here the cloud flat um, is going to kind of shade to the outside. So as a quarterback, what I've got to do is, and I didn't do a good job of it right there, but I've got a low, you need pass lead elite to do this, right? Or, or gunslinger. Most of you probably have that in mutt. So if you have, if you have that ability, what you'll notice here is I'm going to throw it low and inside. And I got to click on a receiver and I got to catch that myself, but I can catch that against cloud flat coverage on that left side. So you have a really good play that kind of beats everything. Um, and what I really like about it is this route to the tight end um, does a really good job at getting underneath the cover four. Um, the cover three zones, some of the deep zones. This is just going to be some stock coverages. Um, and what you'll notice here is these yellows are going to come down. If they're bringing their yellows down, you can hit that tight end in behind it. Uh, one thing before we take off is I want to show you how this works against just regular yellow coverage. Um, I want to show you how that route to the tight end works really quickly. So we're going to use the same play, but instead of our coaching, we're going to put these back on default. And we're going to put the curl flats at 20 yards just because I also want to show you that. Um, from a curl flat perspective, what's going to change uh, for your quarterback as far as what you're going to be seeing on the field. So we've shown you pretty much every coverage, but what I want to show you also um, is I want to show you first and foremost this curl flat. So if I drop my, my curl flats at 20 yards, most people do that because it stops crossing routes, it stops some of the late post routes on the field. If I do that, what you're going to see is that, that purple zone is going to go behind Scotty Miller, and that flat zone is going to continue to pull the curl flat to the outside. So any purple zone, if they have that shaded at 15 to 20 yards, this 10-yard curl is just going to sit right underneath it, right there. And uh, show hand, he's going to turn around, show hands. Very easy read for you. Very, very easy read for you. Now I want to show you um, the middle of the field as well, deep. So this is cover three. What you'll notice is he's going to get in a really nice little pocket. There, the zone from cover three is not going to be able to stop that. Um, that's going to be very consistent for you. So you know, cover three, cover four, it doesn't really matter. You see how he's going to get in a nice little spot, nice little pocket right in behind it. Um, so, you know, again, they're going to have to kind of use her the tight end, 
but they can't really use the tight end because the two routes coming underneath it are going to be very, very powerful. Now, cover two stock does okay um, against the tight end. I just want to show you that mid read will kind of kind of hang with him for a bit. But because those cloud flat or um, because of that route to, to Scotty Miller on the left side, you want to get something like this. That's really what you're looking for. But basically what you'll see here is right when he gets to the inside position, click on secure catch that. You should be able to catch that in front of the in front of the players. The one thing that might happen is you might get a catch tackle, uh, like you're seeing that I'm getting right here. But you'll see right here he's coming underneath, just inside pass lead, click on and secure catch. You're going to be able to make that possession catch pretty nicely. Um, it works even better if you have gunslinger. Now, one of the things that they're going to do, though, is they're probably going to be using that linebacker. But let's say they put that linebacker in the deep middle. The deep middle, if he's in the deep, if he's like in a deep third, that's where I really like this route to the tight end because if the if the linebacker in the middle of the field is going to go back at the snap, if you see he starts traveling back, drift, 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 low ball, possession catch, wide open for you. So this play really beats every coverage in the game. It does really good against cover two. It does really good against cover three. Um, let me show you cover four. Uh, as well with that route to the tight end. Obviously, everything else is going to be open. You're underneath. Your under routes are going to be open. But, you know, this route to the tight end, click on, secure, catch that. One of the things you've got to do is you have to you have to understand the timing of the route, um, specifically as it pertains to cover four. Right when he gets that inside leverage, you just have to trust this, but you will see it will come open. The yellows will come down on the in routes as long as they're in a default depth. Now, if they drop their yellows at 10 to 15 yards, Obviously, both under routes are going to be open, and I would probably, you know, take these under routes, but I just want to show you that, that you can hit this. So, this is the five wide out of the Jets. We're going to be talking about this a little bit today, sharing some plays for you, but I really like this play. Um, it's just a simple yard gainer. It's levels on the right side. We're going to show you in a little bit how to run it on the left side, but it really, you don't need any abilities. You don't need any, you really don't. Um, if you have abilities, it makes it better, but you don't have to. You don't even have to have Hot Route Master. I just like having um, that just to be able to show you what you could do with a tight end apprentice or with a slot apprentice. Obviously, if you have a slot apprentice or a tight end apprentice or a route technician or something, it's going to make this even better. But the nuts and bolts of the scheme can be ran with no abilities at all. Um, the one ability I would recommend is pass lead elite or a gunslinger. So I actually run this in regs with the Packers, uh, and I am able to do it at a pretty high level. So this is the Jets 5 wide. If you want to pick up this week's version of our text message membership, which is the um, – it's a, it's over an hour breakdown on the gun U-trips or Y-off trips pats from New England's playbook, you can text me. Literally, my number is 812-216-3644. It's not a bait and switch thing. We release new videos to you every single week. They're typically very in-depth and they're typically very effective. And it's an entire scheme that builds off of one another as well. Um, not just these isolated play breakdowns, which I know these are effective, but I also want to give you kind of that full scheme and peel back the curtain a little bit. So if you're really looking to take your game to the next level, shoot me a text message. Let me know you'd like to receive the video and I will shoot it your way. Thanks guys. We have another video coming at four at six and at eight o'clock tonight. And we also will be live streaming on our YouTube channel at 10 o'clock PM Eastern time this evening. So be sure to come by. If you haven't joined the discord yet, that link is in the description as well. That way you'll know, um, be up to date on the latest news with the channel. Thank you so much for your time and we'll see you guys in a bit.